Are you watching unsubs still? Mm, are you sure? Because 82% of all people watching these videos aren't subbing. Hey, subscribe, will ya? Okay, welcome back to another video in our plugin building series. Today I kind of wanted to take a, a sidestep to talk about post and get. And we're going to make this video really short. And the reason why is because up to this point, if you've been following, we uh, created a YouTube importer that has a key, a channel ID, in this case it's Motor Trend, and we are just importing information to our database, saving them as custom posts with metadata, and then we're able to output that data so that we can get around hitting an API cap on our YouTube account, and then also when we're um, displaying videos on our site, we're not displaying them always using the YouTube API. Instead, we're using uh, local resources, which I think is better in this case. And like I said, it doesn't ever cap our um, data. Uh, first things first, this is on the general settings page, and this actually needs to be moved to the importer callback, which I'm going to do uh, pretty soon. This is the code. Currently, it's in our settings callback page. We're actually going to move it all over here to our importer uh, page, which is actually called when you click import, because I'm actually we're going to actually make a settings page for a short code output and some stuff like that here pretty quick. But I wanted to um, show you an issue with this software, which I purposefully put in here, which is when this page is loaded and uh, the user decides to go to the import page, once we move it to the import page, in this case it's the setting page, all this code runs. So every time the page runs, it's loading in new uh, videos, even if they're clones, right? Even if it's a duplicate of data we already have. And that's a real problem. Uh, that means that the user can't just go to this page. Well, how does this relate to get and post? Okay. Well, when you're sending information through a web page or uh, you're wanting to capture and send data between pages, you have two ways to do this. So when you're going uh, to send information from page A to page B or say from like when you submit a form on this page and you wanted to do something after the form is submitted and when it reloads, you can send uh, parameters or a query string via get or post and that allows us to control what's being outputted on this page. So we're going to do a quick example and also I'm just going to pull up a notepad right here and give you a better explanation. Uh, I was going to pull up a sketch.io but this is a little easier. All right. So let's just take uh, this website for example. Let's just say like um, WP uh, Word, like my website. Let's just say WordPress in 10 or less.com. All right. And so sometimes when you're visiting web pages, you'll see I'm actually going to make two of these here. You'll see this bottom one here is going to be a get, okay? This is a this is a get request. And and some URLs you'll see this. You'll see a um, question mark in there, and then you'll see something like Okay. Uh, this is called a get request and everything after the question mark are variables that are being passed in the URL. Now it's always going to start with a question mark. It can't be an and symbol. It can't be like this or it's going to be read as a page. It has to have a question mark. And then the variables, this is the variable name. This is the data it's passed. Variable name, data it's passed. Okay. And when we're in PHP, we can get the variable like this. And this is all going to be very relevant in just a second. You'll understand why. So let's say we created a PHP variable called um, the var1. And we set it equals get. Then we put square brackets. And then we would say what was passed in the URL, the variable name. OK, and what do you think the var1 would equal? The var1 would now be equal to yes, because it's getting what it equals. OK, so now we have yes as the var1. And uh, this could actually throw an error unless we do an is set, which is, uh, I'll actually show that to you as well. We have to determine that in fact is set and something is passed. Okay, that's, that's being passed via a get request. Get means it goes through the URL. This will actually appear in the bar, and in fact you can see it right here. It's making a get request for the page, and it's calling the uh, PHP page that's our callback. Because that's what we did when we set up the um, menu, we wanted it to call this page. So that's how WordPress is determining what page to show here and what code to call, okay? So what we can do, what we're gonna do is when the user submits their YouTube API key information, it will save it, but it won't import. What we actually wanna do is in the importer page, we want to create a button that says import videos. And when the user clicks that button, it imports the videos. We don't want it to just do it on its own. We wanna actually force that. 
All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you an example of this very quickly by uh, locking all this data out right here, all this information, and having it not show. Uh, and actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment out all of the PHP code so it's not doing any display at all. All right. So now no PHP code is going to run. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an if statement around this uh, div information in PHP that's not going to output it unless there's a get variable. I'll show you that right now. Okay. So we're going to put that inside here, and we're going to close the PHP. Or we're going to make an if statement. And we're going to say if, uh, first of all, we're going to run a an is set for a new variable. So we say if is set and we're gonna say um, get and we're gonna make it just called bar one like our example, okay? And then we're going to open that bracket. If that is set, we're gonna create a new variable called the new var one equals, I'm doing exactly the thing I just showed you. And we don't need that. All right, so now we just made a uh, if to determine if the var1 is a get variable is set. We want this value to equal whatever the value will be. In this case, we're just going to write yes. Okay, now we're going to say if the new var1 equals, it's two equals, uh, yes, then we want you to do the following thing. And in this case, we want to get rid of this squirrely bracket and we want to end the PHP so that it, this is what's being outputted and then afterwards we want to reopen it close the if statement that's this will close this if statement here this is just being outputted in between now if this is true it will output this information and then we're gonna say else we're just going to echo out variable not set Right, and then we're gonna end that PHP call. Okay, so that's saved real time to our page. Let's go ahead and refresh it, and nothing should be out outputted here. Variable not set. It's because we do not have it in our parameters. We didn't include it as a uh, query call, as one of our, as any of our general queries. So the, as I told you, look through the URL for the uh, question mark. It's already there. Now, anytime you want to add a new variable, you have to go to the end and you have to put in ampersand symbol. We're going to put var1 and we're going to make it equal yes. And we should get our form back, okay? Because our variable has been picked up by the code right here. It determined it was set, that the get variable var1 was available. It, in, it made the new var equal to yes, because that's what we put into our... Uh, information and that's what it output um, sorry back here and then it was able to jump into this statement output it and then leave and so if we have it say anything else even if it's available and it says anything else it'll just say variable not set because we didn't um, we made it needs to equal yes okay but we could have also just said if is set right here do something Okay, but we were just determining if it said something specific. Okay, so we're about eight minutes in now. Why does any of this matter? Well, if it's not obviously, if it's not immediately obvious to you, it is because this is how we're going to be able to control whether we're importing information or not, or doing different um, things on our pages. So, for example, when the user clicks the button for the form, once we build our settings page form, and the user clicks the button that says import, you know what we could do on the form submit we could make the button simply go to the same page, to the import page, and include this on the end of our string as a get variable. And then what will happen in that case? It'll run the import code. Okay, similarly if we create a delete button and we give it a var of delete. See, like we could make this and action, and then action could be delete, import, update, etc. Okay, you, you understand where I'm going with this? And this is a way to do it through get. Now, real fastly, let's talk about post. Post is very similar to get, except for the information is not displayed to the user through the URL. The information is displayed through what's called the header, okay? Header information is sent when a page is loaded in a browser. There's a bunch of hidden information that you do not see. And we could actually install a, a plugin for Chrome called um, 
HTTP headers, I believe is what it's called. And it lets you read the headers real time and shows you kind of what's in there and what's be and what's traveling. Tons of information travels in the headers. And in the case of that, if we did this as a post, uh, this would not show up. Var1 would still be available and it would still say yes, but we'd have to get it like this. Okay, that's how we would have to get var1 if it was being sent as a post variable. But the thing is you say, okay, well how do you send a post variable? Well, post variable is sent um, generally through a form submit and you make the method of the form post versus get. When we're opening an HTML form, uh, we're able to give it a method. And inside the method, we can either say get or post. Okay, and so we would do this right here. And now any information we send, say that we had like a, a text box, for example, Let's say that we had an input and we had it as type uh, text. Okay, we could say name equals var1. Okay, and then when this uh, form is submitted, when we had an action and we tell it where to go, you know, we'd give it a page and say go to this same page or whatever. It's going to send var1, whatever is in its value, as a post variable. So it's not going to appear here. And, uh, and then the user would be able to call it out like this. Okay, so either way we want to go about it, we can do. In this particular example, it's going to be a lot easier for me to run it as a get because it's only being displayed to us as the administrator. It's not being displayed to the user. And so if it was being displayed to a user, you know, they could just type random stuff in there and it could, it could become a mess. Although we could do a lot of stuff to um, error check it and all that, but that's another, that's another story. But in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to run get variables and we're going to be able to build a form that has, uh, like I said, a button that says, Im once your key and all that is set, it'll say import videos, delete videos, up update videos, uh, et cetera. Okay. And then there's going to, it's going to allow us to do all that with our, uh, with our get variables. So that's how we're going to combat the issue that I originally set up in this uh, tutorial, which was I left it so that it does this every single time the page loads. Regardless of what the user is trying to do, it creates the uh, new post and then it goes through and it gets, I think I only had it doing one video, but it goes through and it gets, so say you had it doing all your videos, it goes through and gets all the videos and posts them in and that's not what you want it to do. So you want it to definitely be controlled by a user who can say, Okay, update videos now, and then it will update all the videos. And then the, um, there's lots of, like I said, there are tons and tons of uses for this, but uh, that's what we're going to use it for in our particular example. Okay, we ran a tiny bit longer than 10 minutes, but I just wanted to go over that for anybody who wasn't educated with um, post and get. I know there's a ton of uh, people out there that show examples of this, but I wanted to show it in correlation to how we're going to use it as a tool just to help manage our um, administrative side pages. And so that's going to kind of come into play in our next videos. I didn't want to just be doing it in the next video and not explain like, hey, to manage this stuff, this is what I did. Instead, I kind of wanted to stop and explain, you know, that's a get variable and we want to use is set to make sure it's set. And then we can uh, play with that and output information as we see fit. Anyway, like I said in the beginning of this video, subscribe, will you? And uh, comment and like if you haven't done that already. Definitely uh, let me know if this is helpful to you. Um, and if, it's, if you have any questions at all, just hit me in the comments and I'll try to respond and help you out. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.